Greetings, friends. It's Laxor again, bringing you yet another insane build that absolutely shreds. And this one is a little bit more expensive. It's not exactly a budget build. You can play it in a kind of budget version. But as you can tell, sitting at 9,000 watt here. Um, you don't have to do anything. You're just fine, in general. And we even have bone armor from our transplant. The base idea of this is from Aaron, our great, great friend. Aaron ARPG, right? You know him. And what it is, as you can tell, it's a Wheel of Torment Warlock. It can easily kill everything on screen as well as off screen. Like, it also attacks... Enemies off screen, it keeps healing itself up with ward. It has a ton of damage, and you can even play it as a one click build if you want, because your Wheel of Torment also auto casts your Cophonic Fissure every now and then. You see a lot of uniques, you don't need all of them, but a lot of them. So it's not exactly a bunch of build, I'm not phrasing it like that. Um, then again, these two you should usually have anyway. This is the main ones you need. This one you can farm very easily. Come on. I'm recording a video here, Unrelenting Ice Goliath of Shadows. Can you please stop with the bullshit? Okay, I, I aggroed even more people. That's a problem. Okay. <laughs> Do we have it now? Are we done? Good. So let's start with the spells. Well, the skills, rather. So. Aaron played a high life build with this, where you have um, rip blood. I decided to go for low life because then I sit at 8,000 watt most of the time. Which is just much better in my eyes. The base idea is very simple, alright? You have your Kephanic Fissure, and the key things you want to have is this one. Twisted Waves. So what you do is, you go down this route first, right down here. And you can put a bunch of these because you need the spirits to even do damage. And with the Chaos Bolts. So the first way is down or up here. Especially early. And then late game, you want to go here. This is what scales your damage late game a lot. Because it says, Torment, which is your damage over time from Curses, deals more damage per 2% uncapped necrotic resistance. Uncapped necrotic resistance. If you look at our character, we have 408 Necrotic resistance, and this is not even, you can max this out much more, you can get this up to like 800. If you set your items properly, and if you have the proper affixes, um, but already at 400, and this is 127 corruption. It's not insanely high, but it's good enough for good items, and you see, you saw how easy it is to go through here. And not even level 100, right, so I even gain more buffs later. So, oh wait, there it is, Kofanic Fissure. So this is the main damage thingy, 2%. 3% damage per 2% necrotic resistance. You also have to crit multi down here. You can't see this properly. Um, for 1% and critical strike multiplier, you also gain more damage. Necrotic damage, that is. This is a whole fully necrotic damage build, okay? Now, Cophonic Fire, Cophonic Fire also does fire damage, but we don't care about this. We scale this with necrotic on all our skills. Key thing is this, okay? Also, you notice just a bigger fissure, but this. Spirits are replaced by Chaos Bolts. Okay, and this is why we have to skill a little bit into the... what's it called? Actually, never mind. I'm an idiot. Forget about this. The Chaos Bolts are part of the Warlock anyway. I was thinking of the Necromancer. Forget it. Uh, this casts Chaos Bolts automatically, right? Every now and then, instead of the Spirits. Chaos Bolts? It's very simple. It just gives us chance to inflict damned, hit damage on damned, more damage over time. This is a great buff, by the way. And fear. Fear is a great addition on the chaos bolts here. We need to do damage themselves, right? But um, this is great. The fear is awesome because you. I sometimes fear the entire screen. They run away from me, so I don't gain any damage. And I keep hitting my soul feast, which hits them anyway. I don't have to aim. So I like the, the fear maxed out here a lot. 
Also more damage to curse enemies, etc. So these just do more damage. I don't go on any of these. You saw with the Blood Warlock, we went with... With these two. And Eren also goes with Rip Blood. But... You can't really go with anything health... Anything that gives you health. So you also can't go down here. Okay, very important. Anything that gives you health ruins your low life build. You are a low life build. And when your Exanguinous gets health... That's bad for you. Okay? Um, you want to maximize your ward, not your health. Very key thing. So ignore everything health. That doesn't do anything. And rib blood also doesn't. This is why we go with transplant for many other reasons. Um, yeah, so this is not really crazy. It's just the fear mostly and bigger area and all that. So this is what you do damage with the Kephanic Fissure. Simple. Then we have the Soul Feast. And that's also very simple. Uh, cast speed you want to have maxed out so you can actually really shred with it. This is a nice addition. Withering on hit. Withering is great so they deal damage taken from curses. That's it. You can even max this out if you want. More stacks on it. Mana cost. More ward. And also grants you mana. This is this is key. You need to usurp very early because you, otherwise you run out of mana fast because... The Chaos Bolts casted by your Kephonic Fissure still use your mana. So sometimes just your Kephonic Fissure entirely eats your, all your mana. Uh, additional ward, additional ward, etc. Down here you can choose between these two once you maxed out this, this tree. This one gives you more damage, this one gives you more health. So if you die fast or if you're always low on ward, you want to go with this. If your damage lags, go with this. You can play around which one you use. It's very simple. Bone Curse is casted by all Transplant automatically. This is sort of a nice addition. I really run this, I also have it in the bar. Because of this, 12% kill threshold. So once you get an enemy, especially a boss, below 12%, you just cast your R on them. Bam, they're dead. You don't even need to fight any more on this. Very nice. It also gives us Armor Shred, it gives us a Bone Armor. It gives Mark for Death. And we turn it into Necrotic Damage over here. This doesn't really, it's not really necessary, but um, it's kind of a nice addition. The damage is relevant, right? We don't do the 300, but there's really nothing else you really need. This doesn't work, by the way. I tried it. You might think it does. It doesn't. Because you never directly cast Bone Curse, or very rarely. It's auto cast by Transplant. So we really only use this for the Kill Threshold and the Armor Shred. That's the main idea with this. You don't even need to go here if you, you can keep it physical and put more into slow. Um, I think you can even go with ma you don't even need this either you can put the damage up if you want but there's really no need if you want to also throw in bleed you can do this it's not really necessary transplant classic thing as always less health used bone armor, bone armor, bone armor that's a key that makes you very tanky on top of your 8000 ward frenzy and haste very nice, the frenzy you don't need but the haste is nice the key thing, however, is this, right? You cast Bone Curse around the target location after you arrive. Key thing. Because this applies the Armor Shred on the enemy. So you want to Transplant on them. You want to cast your bone, uh, your Kephanic Fish, and then you just keep hitting Q. And we turn it into Necrotic Damage as well. And it also inflicts Fear, another one. Pretty cool down here as well. But the key thing you really want to have is this. And all these max, the Bone Armor. That's what you're going to have. Very simple, really. Now, the passives are... I mean, the Acolyte is pretty much always the same, right? Vitality gives you more health. That's cool. Water retention, you want to have this. And Intelligence. Like, Intelligence scales your damage. Here, it's also very simple. We go with Intelligence. Spell damage for curses. That's, of course, awesome. Uh, Ward Decay Threshold. Vitality and Ward Decay Threshold per 1% Necrotic Resistance. Since we have a ton of necrotic resistance, this also gives us way more ward. So you need this. Three points is enough. This is your three-point bonus. That's what you want. Armor health. Health is great. Ward per second. So the whole warlock tree is mostly around your health and intelligence. We don't do any of this shit. We don't need it. See, intelligence, vitality, health again. Uh, yeah, double damage chance. You only want this for this. The critical multi... Because that crit multi also buffs your damage, as we saw in the Kephanic Fissure. If we go here, this one. And ailments 
deal more necrotic damage per 1% added critical strike multiplier. But this is why we go with this, right? Um, anguish is another debuff or like a negative aimment on the enemy. You don't need it. It's a cool addition. Blithering is nice. You take less damage from withered enemies. 8%. Pretty neat. And it also increases their damage taken from curses. So this is very neat. You want that. Everything else is walled, health, and um, yeah, crit multi. And this one, health, and more damage per negative aim on you. That's fine. So the warlock is really mostly about survivability. Then we have the lich. Intelligence and mana region. Nice. Necrotic damage. Awesome. This sucks until you get this. Well, we, you kind of have to put points in here to even get to this point, right? So we do this. This gives you health. That's cool. But the spell damage leech is bad for you, as I said, because you don't want to leech health. You have ward. So you put two points into this. I actually would wait until I have three points ready, put two points into this, and then into this, because all, all sources of health leech, all of them, are converted to increase damage at 10 times the value. So basically, you just remove all health leech. You just have your ward now, but you do also more damage from any health leech, from this, for example. So all the spell damage leech is turned into damage. Pretty nice. And then here, the crippling insight on the lich, pretty awesome. Um, this gives you two points of intelligence per point on this node, so you can get 16 intelligence on this. And health region is relevant, we don't have it anyway. So this scales all your damage super crazily. So yeah, you put a lot of in, in the lich. Now the items are key. I'm going to show you later also how to play this properly, how I did this whole movement step, stutter stepping. What you need definitely is Exanctionist and the Bone Claymore Bar Boot. These two you do need. Actually, this one as well. Yeah, sorry. So these are all legendaries, by the way. You can have them just as unique, so you don't need the legendaries. You need these three. This is the absolute minimum. Then the build is good, but not crazy. Wheel of Torment is obvious, right? What does it do? Intelligence, fine. When you directly cast Cole's, Cole's Soul Feast, you curse yourself. That's great, because negative aimments on you also buffs your damage. Um, necrotic penetration, etc, etc. And you have a chance to cast Caphonic Fissure when you hit a boss or an enemy with Soul, uh, soul Feast. Also spell mana cost reduction, intelligence, Echolite spells. So the, the fourth one in this case, when you directly cast Soul Feast, you curse yourself. And up to one nearby enemy per 10 intelligence with Torment. So that is awesome. So much... Curse on the enemies, that's what really why you want to have the Wheel of Torment. Exanction as you know, same as always, low life build. Bone Claim of Baboot is key, a lot of intelligence on this. You can roll this better by the way, 8 dex and 8 int is very low. I've seen 12. The lowest one, the last one. 1 ward per second per 3% unkept necrotic resistance. So this whole build revives around unkept necrotic resistance. This is what you see with the items as well. This one is on necrotic damage, but it also has 40% necrotic resistance on the third affix, right? Um, this necrotic damage, necrotic resistance down there and health. Super awesome. Implicit. This is a great one if you find this. Necrotic resistance, wall decay threshold, 18 int and armor. Insane. Ignore the totem shit, doesn't matter. If you don't have this, just get a ring like this one. Necrotic Resistance as Exalt, that's what you want. Necrotic Resistance, Intelligence, Cast Speed, Great Mana. That's pretty much for the... If you don't have these, just go with Exalts that have Necrotic Resistance. That is your damage, or Wall DK Threshold, Intelligence scales your damage, and that's what you want, or just Health. Now, the last steps of the Living make your build even stronger, it makes you even tankier. Wall DK Threshold, look, 187. Movement speed, and of course, it helps to eat all your health and give you um, ward back. This one is also great. The fire damage is irrelevant. Fire resistance, cool. 15% 15, 15 chance on hit to gain 2 ward per ignite and damped on the target, and 30 ward per ignite and damped on you. You're going to put a lot of damped on the enemies as well. Not just torment, but also damped. We have this in our spells. So we gain ward from that a lot. Care speed, ward retention. Fire damage, okay, cool. I mean, Caphonic Fissure also still does fire damage. Necrotic damage. Nice. This one I just found today on stream. Awesome. 
you don't get the first two buffs uh, because you don't have any current health. If you play a high life build, this is even better because it gives you ward on your health. What we want is the plus one to necrotic spells, plus one to elemental spells. So this gives plus two to Kephanic Fissure and the uh, Chaos Bolts. Strength, cast speed, and the increased health. Makes you tanky as fuck. If you don't have it, because this is pretty rare, I, I've been using this one a lot. Mana region is nice, but also necrotic damage, necrotic resistance. Again, same thing, you want to have the necrotic resistance. That's what you go for. Very simple. I have necrotic damage on here. You can play around with it a little bit, what you do, more damage on our resistance. Resistance does give you great damage on your torment. So when in doubt, go for more necrotic resistance. I might switch this one for one that has this um, exalted. But I like the necrotic damage and the resistance on it. It's pretty, pretty neat. Also crit chance. Pretty neat. Yeah, this one is insane, obviously. If you get one with two exalts, uh, that's that's the mastery. So, idols. Um, very simple. This one is king if you have this. It's pretty nice. Cast, beat, while cursed, and physical resistance. This one is, this one is insane. If you have it, awesome. Other than that, just go health. It's all health. Always with the Acolyte. Health, elemental resistance. Health, 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 wall retention. Health, chill with necrotic skills is cool, but health. Health, wall retention. Health, ward potion use, ward health, health mana. You can have better ones than I have. They are much better rolls on the idols. Um, these are not the best, but these are the ones I have currently. Um, idols with the Acolyte are always simple. I always feel silly doing this section of the video because it's always the same. It's just health. <laughs> just always health. Um, this one, of course, is a cool addition. That's it about build. Now, let's see. Um, what you can do, actually, is because you see I do my... I do the stutter stepping right with the soul feast, this one. What I do is I keep just pressing down Q, which is my soul feast. Keep pressing it down and then also keep pressing down your move button. Then it sort of Yeah, exchanges them every now and then. Like you do one soul feast, one move, and the game does it automatically. Alright? So this is a cool addition to actually be moving right with the soul feast so you can slowly move out of damage as well. Other than that, what you do is you, you group your enemies, you find them, when there's any enemies around you. Okay, these are also pretty low ones. Unless they body block you, then you just transplant in, you find a fissure, and then you just keep stutter stepping with your soul feet. That's what you do. The uh, finding fissure runs out at some point, then you just cast it again. Or you can also just do it as a one-click build. There's no fucking enemy here. What's what's going on? Um, if we just do the soul feast, but the chance is pretty low. See, now it casts the Kefanic Fisher. That's what the Wheel of Torment does. Your unique item, right? It sometimes it has, I think, a ten percent chance to auto cast the Fisher. For some reason, it doesn't do the double one because we have the big one, right? If it's auto cast by the Wheel, it doesn't do the big one. I don't know why. It's weird. Anyway, this is how you play it. You also have... Okay, fuck off. As I said, Chaos Bolt you don't even put on your bar because it's autocast. You also have Profane Veil on here, even though it's not specialized. This is just to dodge damage, right? If there is a lot of damage coming in or you... Um, an attack by the boss is telegraphed, you do the Kephanic Fissure. Ah, sorry, the Profane Veil. And dodge it that way. Again, the Bone Curse, when you see the boss is below 12% health, it shows it at the top, you just cast your... Oh, that was not it. You just cast your Bone Curse, he's dead immediately. Super awesome. Very simple. This can take very high corruption. This can easily do 300, 400 corruption in my eyes. No problem. You just gotta look a little bit more on dodging attacks then. But see, these things that come here, these, these lines, that are coming towards me. That is the soul feast eating from the enemies. And you can do this off screen. Sometimes you aggro enemies off the screen. You can't even see. Um, no problem. So that's just, just super awesome. Very easy build. That's it for today. Um, if you have any more recommendations, if you want to change something or anything, I will also make one high life. I will look if you can make one happen. I don't like it too much, but we'll see. Um, 
Anyway, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you in the next video and leave a like and a subscribe down below if you enjoyed it. Until then, have a good time tormenting people with your curses.